So you said that you were a robber. Right. What type of robberies were you doing back in the day? Any kind that, that I could uh, pull enough loot in to keep me, you know, keep my habits up to, you know, drive nice cars and, you know what I'm saying, you know, low riders and, you know, dress nice and, you know, uh, keep some change in my pocket. You know, I, I did a whole lot of different, you know, I did property robberies. I would rob dope dealers as a habit, you know, when I caught them outside, you know, they neighborhood and in my neighborhood mostly, but, you know, I would, I would migrate to other parts of, you know, the county and, you know, you hear about somebody having it and they, you know, they not, they security not up to par and, you know, you just grab a crew and go get them. You know what I'm saying? That, but, but you would rob drug dealers in your own neighborhood? In and out of my own neighborhood. In, okay. In and out of my hood. So what would happen when you guys run into each other afterwards? Oh, I, I ran into a guy at a fish fry that I robbed about, uh, about two, three months after I robbed him. He was shaking like a leaf. You know what I mean? Because I was there. I was with a couple of my boys. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I always kept a thumper on me. You know, that you, when you live in that life, you really don't have no choice. And, you know, he, was, he told me, he was like, man, I... You know, I knew you was fresh out, man. I would, I would have gave you something, man. I, you know, I, man, you didn't have to do me like that. That's man. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, I didn't know you, dude, and you was out in my area getting money. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it happened. But you know, we good because he was one of my, one of my people's kinfolk. But hey, it was done. I didn't get nothing back. He didn't expect nothing back. So <laughs> right. that was it. I mean, how much would you get? Like, what, what, what was like your biggest take? back then mm, because probably, uh, about, probably about like 26 28 racks okay nice chunk yeah yeah get you get you through some you know yeah couple yeah. few months oh yeah and then you know you splitting that with your boy you know and probably yeah. whoever was the driver you know you're gonna slide him something so you know what i'm saying and most people would take that and then they get them some work and flip it me i spin it and go hit me another lick and get me some more so that's why i say i wasn't really never the dope dealer but in certain of my crimes you know i would I would have dope, so you know I have a fire sale on dope. You know what I'm <laughs> okay, hey man, y'all come okay, get you this. You just rob someone know? for a few kilos. You're not trying to cook it up yourself, so let's go to whoever does that and. Man, get this off me, man. With you know, give me this, man. Take it. Why? Why the robbery over over the dope dealing? Because it seemed like the dope dealing is easier. I didn't have patience. I didn't have patience. You, you know just wanted quick. I just, and not only that, you know, I'm 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 not a sit still kind of person. It's hard for me to like, you know, just, you know, not be mobile and involved and, you know, interact. So just sitting up and and I'm not a, you know, a gamer or nothing like that. So, you know, I'm and sitting here it was like to me sitting inside of a dope house waiting on the police to come kick the door in or waiting on somebody like me to come <laughs> kick the door in and get it. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah. you know, I, that's too much tension. You know what I mean? So I just didn't really take to that lifestyle. Yeah, no, we just interviewed this dude, Solo Lucci. I was in my brother's house on the east side of our city, you know what I'm saying? Some guys, one guy was coming in, kept trying to buy Weed and shit, you know, it wasn't even the big spot. We selling a little mid, maybe some couple of little whatever we was doing. You do know what I'm saying? And they came, he kept coming in all day buying a little $20, $40 worth for $80 worth, leaving out. And the last time he came, when he left out, it was some dudes already sitting outside on the steps. So they didn't like kick the door in or no gangster shit. Like, you know, he opened the door to walk out and they just rushed in with guns and shit and immediately started shooting, you know what I'm saying? Like. They said a couple words like, you know what it is? And shit, we found out what it was. Now at this time, my friend was visiting from college. He had just uh, finished the first part of like law school. I guess he was about to do the, I guess his levels to this. I don't know about this shit, but anyway, he was about to become a lawyer. His family owned a law firm. And so he was already on the path for that. He used to put me up on the underground rappers, let me know who's coming out and stuff. We was playing Madden and they rushed in, you know, uh, unfortunately he died. They shot him twice, and he died. I got shot first, they rushed past me. He tried to hide in the closet, they shot him twice. Like, up under right here when he was trying to open the door. And uh, he died. Shit. My cousin jumped out the sixth door when he ended up breaking his hip bone, pelvis bone, all that. He ran, and uh, 
My big brother was there. He hid in the second closet. They didn't find him. The, the, the dudes who did it, I knew some of them. One of them lived with me. But we well, it, it was it was your roommate? No, nah, I don't got no roommate. I'm a boss. Like I pay for everything. I mean, somebody living with me, they up under me, just living with me. Like I ain't okay. no roommate shit. I'm grown, you know. But like okay. he was uh, just a little dude from my hood, just like yeah yo, you know yeah yo younger than me, he under my hood. He was another little guy that just got out. You know what I'm saying? And he needed some help. He didn't have clothes. He didn't have nowhere to stay. He didn't have a lot of stuff. And he was in there on a on a murder charge already. You know what I'm saying? And when he got out, I'm a big homie. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to make sure that they was okay. You know, like the worst day of your life kind of situation. You know, his had to get a lung removed, like in a wheelchair. Yeah, this is this is what happens when you hang out in a in a dope That's house. another thing. You can't trust nobody really right. in that game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can trust the person I'm with. Look, man, we finna go do this. We finna get this money. We gotta get away. If in the process of us escaping, it get hot, I'm blasting. I'm letting you know, so don't don't try to let me out of none of that. Well, I'm getting off. Hope you get off too. If we get away, we're gonna split the hall and you go about yours, I go about mine, you know. So, yeah. You know, I, you can't trust nobody in that, man, you know. So I no, nah, I, I I didn't take the dope dealing like that. Yeah. I mean, because you know, I also interviewed uh A. Z. Faisan, mm -hmm. who was Wood Harris's character in Paid in Full. Right. So, you know, same thing essentially happened to him. Well, you, you say you got shot. I got shot in the head twice, man, and five people was in, in that situation with me. You know, three people died, and uh, three people lived. Okay. You feel me? So, so what exactly happened in that on that day? That day, that day, I was playing ball on the east side, and uh, we was playing these cats for well, like five thousand dollars. We lost the first game, we ran it back, we won the second game, they wanted to play again. But I was like, man, fuck it. I don't feel like playing no more. Because it became argumentary, like, well, you know, yeah. stupid shit. So we didn't play, we walked from the east side <clears throat> to, to, to our location, 132nd Street, where we be at. My man Sherman was like, yo fam, we, you know, we've been dry all day, so I had to shoot to the Bronx to where the drugs was at, which I didn't have much left, that was like, at, you know, a little bit, maybe like about a half a bird left. Mm -hmm. And um, I went from, from 132nd Street to the Bronx to my aunt's house. And when we walked into to the situation, these cats was already up there. They had them in a, an apartment and we walked into it. You feel me? And they snatched me in the living room, threw me on the floor, opened up the safe, bah, 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 smacked me with the gun. And one thing led to the next, man. They wound up shooting me in the head and shit. This is, yeah, this is the dope game for you. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and how many people really get through the dope game successfully? Most people that I know, they used to sell dope, that no longer sell dope, they're working. They're working right now. Something that they never did before, but they working right now because they seen the future. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it's hard out here right now for a lot of people. So it being hard and you trying to, bleed the community for what little that they don't got, you know, you, you waiting on the penitentiary sentence.